so a few other things I carry for cuts in the woods is um, hydrogen peroxide in a dripper bottle. Yep, throw that on there. Hydrogen peroxide. Um, I carry some alcohol. That's going to be very painful for a cut, but uh, that's why I carry the hydrogen peroxide. Alcohol is good for, you know, uh, sanitizing your equipment, your knives and such. But uh, band-aids, of course. And I also carry this homemade salve that I made out of yarrow, olive oil, and plantain. That's also good for, uh, it's an antihistamine, you know, poison ivy, little minor cuts. It's very good. I'll be doing a video on that. There's also a video, Sigma 3 Survival does it. And also the guy, um, Survive Without, did the exact same video. And I'm subscribed to both of them. You can uh, look them up. Great videos. Great salve to use. Those guys are, those guys know what they're talking about. They're good. So, a uh, few things that I carry that are very important for cuts. Um, also, something that people kind of forget about that's, um, that's good, and, and a lot of people who smoke obviously have tobacco. Tobacco can be, um, can be emulsified up, rubbed, rubbed on a cut. Um, it, also, uh, it also keeps uh, mosquitoes away, I believe. Uh, Dave Canterbury and um, Dave Canterbury and uh, Cody Lundeen actually used some tobacco for that reason on Dual Survivor one time. Over here, buddy. Dual Survivor one time to uh, to help them. I think uh, in a mosquito situation, but tobacco. It's uh, it's also a good resource. Uh, obviously, if you don't carry it on you or you don't smoke, you're not going to have it out there, but it's a good thing to carry for cuts. Now, I have a tourniquet for just in case for um, for what I, you know, serious cuts. If it's um, if I if I trip and fall and let's say I do break a leg and it slices an artery and I see bright red blood pumping out with my heartbeat as it goes, I want to uh, tourniquet that off okay now I understand you know if you do tourniquet something off you only got a little bit of time before that limb dies essentially because you're cutting off the blood to that limb you you know you want to um, if I cut my wrist down here and it's an arterial cut and I see it pumping out bright red blood I want to hold pressure on my brachial artery, which is inside my armpit right here. Hold pressure down on that. And if you do that just like this, after a while you can feel your arm throbbing. It's like if I take your blood pressure and squeeze that real tight and close off that artery, your the bottom of your arm is gonna feel numb and tingly and, and it's gonna start throbbing. And uh, that's that's because I closed off that artery. So if I get a, a major cut down here on my wrist, I want to close off above the cut on that main artery. So let's say if I do get a, a really serious cut down here on my femoral artery, um, which is which runs which runs right down through my growing here, I want to close that artery off right here. So a tourniquet would help right there. Um, above the cut okay so uh, that being said you know you only have a little bit of time before that in, that limb actually actually dies and uh, in fact in um, in the the emergency medical services uh, field they stopped teaching that there for a while uh, when I went uh, seven years ago uh, to get my paramedic license they actually uh, talked they spoke badly of tourniquets and not using tourniquets uh, but they have since gone back to using tourniquets. Now, this is just a simple tourniquet for starting IVs. They do make better tourniquets now that actually are a built. That is good. For that is good. That is good. Throw it on there. They actually make better tourniquets now that will Velcro around, and it's almost like a. You can use a. Um, you can use a stick out here. So you would take. You would take your stick. I don't have one next to me, but um, you would take your stick 
and I'll just fabricate one real quick for you. So you would take your stick and you would tear off a, a, a chunk of this and let's say that you know it was around my arm so I would tie this tight I would wrap my stick in the middle of that and I would actually twist that stick up and the stick would actually create leverage on that tourniquet and keep that tourniquet tight you can use a pencil as well a pencil will work as well obviously I didn't spend much time on this so this is not gonna be a good one in a true situation you're gonna be panicky you need to try to calm yourself down and really fabricate a good one out of this um, you could almost stick the stick through the rag or through the shirt or through anything and um, you can actually stick it through your shirt here and twist and twist and twist and twist until that shirt tightened up around there okay and uh, you can tuck this underneath your shirt and it would hold pressure on that for you that way you don't have to hold pressure the whole time on that so just a few ways you can make and fabricate a tourniquet out of nothing you know sticks are all over so you can use those but anyway they make a um, they make a, a velcro one that does essentially the same thing wraps around you and you twist a piece of plastic that looks like a a pencil twist it twist it twist it and then it actually snaps into itself to hold so anyway they're bringing tourniquets back anyway I just carry this IV tourniquet in case I need it so um, then you also have cling this sticks to uh, like tape uh, but it's cloth uh, I also carry three inch tape multiple multiple uses um, this uh, this pad is just a dressing a multi-use dressing soaks up a lot of blood um, its natural alternative is obviously the moss uh, plantain goes under the moss moss goes on top of the plantain or yarrow and um, then you bandage it with uh, with anything you need with anything you have I mean your shirt or anything um, I uh, carry a few rubber gloves around with me just in case an ace bandage this also comes in handy for cuts uh, splints sprains I also carry some steri strips. Steri strips are nice because they stick really well for little minor cuts. Um, they almost take the place of stitches. They're like temporary stitches. So those are good. I don't uh, have any super glue, but super glue for cuts is really, really well. It works really good for a, um, a um, temporary bandage. And it's also waterproof. You know, you can put a little. Um, super glue on top of that it's gonna sting for a minute but it's waterproof and it uh, almost acts as a temporary scab um, super glue I've used before really really works good uh, for deep 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 cuts you're obviously not gonna use you're not gonna use any of that you know you can apply pressure with a pad or with your moss apply pressure do the tourniquet uh, try to calm yourself and then try to get out of the situation um, So You can do a lot of things, you know, you can you can do a lot of things in nature to to get you know um, Help yourself in a, in a situation if you do have a bad cut uh, or minor cuts, so uh, The best thing is to keep yourself calm work with what you got adapt and overcome and um, get your ass out of there alive. So anyway, this is a quick video on cuts, lacerations. Um, stay tuned for more videos on the um, first aid uh, series that I got going on. And uh, thanks for your views, comments, and support. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.